Good morning, everyone. Thank you for getting up to uh, at this early hour to attend this talk here. Um, the subject is individual activism. So we're talking about individuals and for and individuals of all ages. And on this panel, we've got a very good representation of three age groups. Uh, Rick is the youngest guy, 21, is it? 22 now. 22 now, wow. It's <laughs> too many here. Uh, yeah, you're catching up to me. And uh, Bruce, I don't know how old Bruce is, but he... 18. 18, okay. <laughs> Second, and the oldest guy just turned, became a senior citizen in February, so... Anyway, individual activism, we're talking about... Okay, let me just see a show of hands. How many people are head of organizations? Okay. Um, how many people are members and campaigners of organizations? Wow. How many people are individuals who are trying to do something? All right, so everybody. That's what I, that's what I see, everybody raise their hands. So, individual activism involves what I consider the power of one. I believe that an individual is extremely powerful, it could be as powerful as a huge organization if you do the right thing and do it right. Sometimes a huge organization may have drawbacks uh, due to internal friction, uh, due to uh, uh, depletion of funds. Uh, excuse me, there's a camera right behind you. Oh, I'm sorry. Individual, um, what was my sentence? <laughs> uh, How the individual can be more powerful than an yes, organization. Right, right. Um, organizations could have drawbacks. Um, internal friction, uh, too much funds being sucked, sucked up by uh, overhead, you know, office expense, huge salaries. There are some big um, organizations whose heads are pay themselves $300,000 a year, which means about $40,000, uh, $35,000 uh, $35, a month. I mean, what the heck can people do with that kind of money? I don't know. I mean, this money that he's paying himself not, myth, not mentioning names, is for the animals. And I believe that a huge salary for the CEOs is robbing the animals of the donation money that people have hard earned and donated for the animals. It's unethical, in my opinion, and, and internal corruption in our movement. So, but individuals probably don't have this problem. They cannot. I mean, I'm an, an individual, I'm a the head of a group that is non-profit and I do not pay myself any salary whatsoever. And I formed this organization in 1999 and I haven't paid myself a single cent. So, you know, I'm sticking by that principle until I die, which probably won't take too long. So, it wouldn't be a huge challenge. <laughs> all right, so, all right, let's just talk about some um, nitty gritty things. Writing letters, for example. Everybody can write letters. It doesn't matter if you're a head of, a, of an organization. It doesn't matter if you are a campaign director or a uh, job boy or whether you're just an individual. You can always write letters. But there is a way of writing letters that could be effective and there could be a way of writing letters which could be a total waste of time. If you just write a letter to a government official that you think is appropriate to the cause that you want to achieve, it is a waste of time. They could what they would, if you, if you spend five hours crafting a letter, they would spend about five seconds glancing at it and putting it into an empty box and count how many, and that's about as far as it will go. So if you want to write a letter, always CC it to newspaper reporters. Always. Always CC it to other government departments that may or may not be relevant, but which could put pressure on that department that you are interested in and uh, so but always for, always send it to newspapers and media and let the politician know about it that it is being sent to media okay that's number one because if you just just uh, um, write a letter what you'll get back you will get back something you'll get back of a letter which could be written really well could be written really poorly but it always would be a form letter I, I sent a letter to uh, to the uh, Canadian Department of Fisheries and Oceans, which controls the Canadian seal hunt, and what I got back was a very nicely worded letter, very misleadingly nice, nicely worded letter, which I thought was individually crafted for yours truly, which is a, is a total self-delusion. 
and I showed it to a friend of mine. He read it and he ran into his office and dug up a letter, three years old, signed by somebody else, but word for word, the same letter. And uh, it didn't achieve a single thing. So, number one. Number two, if you want to campaign for a certain cause, campaigning outside of your country to drive for external pressure against your country is much more effective than if you want to try to persuade individual politicians to go and do your bidding. It won't happen. So, for example, I'm Canadian, and about a Canadian seal hunt, I have done my bidding in Canada to no result whatsoever. So I've taken it outside of Canada to campaign in the United States and in Europe particularly. And uh, not just me, you know, lots of anti seal hunt activists have done that uh, to the point when, well, first of all, the U.S. has always banned Canadian seal products. Uh, so my hat off to all Americans on this score. Note on this score. <laughs> there are other scores that are pretty dis despicable. Um, and uh, our uh, colleagues and so on have successfully urged the European Union to ban Canadian, Canadian seal products. So the Canadian politicians are really on a hot plate. They are they they can jump out of the hot plate because it's going to go into the fire because they have to appease the Newfoundland voters so that they will stay in power. That's the problem. So uh, you've got to put immense pressure on Canada. When I was doing that, I painted my car with a slogan, I am Canadian, boycott my country. And, and it still stands, so please do that. But when you boycott somebody as an individual, you, have, you can't just boycott it and not buy anything and just feel good. Because you've got to let your victim know why you're doing it. So you write to Canada and say, I'm not going to come to your 2010 Winter Olympics because of your seal hunt. You have to say because of, otherwise they, they wouldn't know what you're doing. Okay. So, 